Hello, hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today, it's another critical sass. Whoop, whoop, whoop. If you happen to be new to me, Critical Sass is where I talk about new makeup releases. I use accounts like Trend Mood One, Makeup on My Radar, and Point Click Five to resource the imagery for what we do here. So if you're not familiar with those Instagrams, I'm gonna link them down below. They post about new released makeup and they all have their own promo codes and they're affiliated with different brands. What I really recommend you do is to follow them. And then whenever they post about something that you wanna buy, if they have an affiliate link or have an affiliate code for you to use them because what they do is really hard work. And if those accounts didn't do what they do, I couldn't do what I do here. And a lot of other people who do new makeup release videos wouldn't be able to do what they do. So make sure you check out those accounts. But what we're going to be doing is like unpacking the makeup marketing, trying to figure out what is really worth our dollar, being critical of the things that are not worth our dollar, and you know, just talking about it. Because what I like to do on my channel is like build the habit for myself and help you build the habit to be more discerning about what we bring into our makeup collection and not pull the trigger so quickly. So we're going to do that today. Let's jump into it. So I went on to Trend Mood and I scrolled back to where I left off. The release is are coming out quicker now. There is so there are so many releases just on Trendmood, who I think posts the least out of the three accounts that I just mentioned, because Trendmood doesn't often talk about indie makeup releases, and those other ones do. There's a lot to talk about. We're gonna dive into it. Let's get into it. So some of the things, because it's been a couple weeks, have already been released, but I still would like to throw my two cents in on them. So the first thing I'd like to discuss with you is the Glam Light and Ghost Face collab. So Ghost Face of Scream fame, the Ghost Face killer, but not that Ghost Face killer. You know what I mean? So this palette was released. Let's talk about it. So when I look at it, I see dark, I see smoky, I see black, I see white. So it's just like kind of a gradient. I see some like blue, like it's blue, maybe like a little bit of purple in there, but mostly it's like a cool toned, very saturated, deep palette. A fight or fight response kicks in whenever I see this. And what it, that is, is I tried a Dior Quint called New Look, and I don't know that they make it anymore. Dior has been like overhauling. But anyway, at the time it was called it was the New Look palette. And what this reminds me a little bit of it, not in like color story so much, but like a little bit. This all looks like it's the same depth to me. And the problem I had with that little Quint from Dior was that everything was the same depth. And what happens is I can't build structure if there is no difference in depth. So I need light shades and deep shades. And oftentimes, you know, just to throw it out there, shades don't go deep enough in a lot of palettes to add that special depth that is necessary. So when I see this, that's what I think. Yeah, I like the way it looks. It's not a scream collab. It's a ghost face collab. And I think that that was set on purpose. It reminds me a little bit of the Chucky palette, which I think Glam Light released. There was a Chucky palette for Valentine's Day and it was really deep. It had some reds in it, but it was really deep. I love uh, these deeper palettes, right? I just I feel like we don't see a lot of it. And like, if, if there's any time to do it, I think Halloween is the time to do it. So while I'm criticizing, for it. I'm also praising it for it because I do like to see these. Sometimes we just like pay these really deep palettes like dust during the rest of the year and like we can only wear. I love a black smoky eye whenever I would like to do a black smoky eye. So I would like to see more of that out and available. Now it's not always what I'm doing, but it's like something that I really definitely enjoy doing. And I feel like palettes like this like allow you to do that. It would be nice to see different colors because I do feel like when we go this deep, it's black or it's like a deep burgundy, but we could do like other colors with that depth. There's a lot of colors I feel like get avoided in that depth, like a really deep, almost black green, a almost black purple. Now blues get thrown in there a lot. I feel like purple, they always do like a mid-tone purple, but like a, just a really rich, beautiful purple. And I understand that purples are hard to formulate. You know, I feel like that's one of those things is common knowledge, but like, where did I learn that? I don't know. But like, it's like a thing that we all talk about in the beauty community. Like purples are really hard to formulate, you guys. I don't know that to be true. I mean, like I've heard it, I regurgitate it, but are they and why? <laughs> Those two things, I don't know the answer to. When it comes to something like this, I just feel like it doesn't have to be all black. And I am also not the one to be like talking about color. I don't use the most colorful makeup, but I just it would like to see it. And there are certainly brands like Blend Bunny who have done this. Like they have done that deep with different colors. I'm not well versed in their palettes, but I definitely feel like I've seen that from them before. But I just would like to see more brands doing it because the thing about Blend Bunny is I don't like the layouts of their palettes, whether they all have the, like, whether gradient or whether they're not gradient. I just don't want 30 new eyeshadows. I would like to somewhat, see someone doing like something more concise than that, like less. Anyway, I think this is a really cool release. You know, I would like to see a, sc a scream, and I know it's not a, and I know it's not, but I would like to see a scream 
collaboration. And I feel like the person who's probably going to do it is Drew Barrymore with Flower Beauty. Like, I, unless that's already happened and I missed it. I remember there being an E.T. one. There was another one, too, that she did that I don't really remember. But like, I feel like th- that Flower Beauty had two palettes like that. It's an exciting release, sort of. I don't know, but I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it. I do think that the issues with the depth of the shadows in here would be, like, if I bought it, that would be the Joy Kill. But again, eyeshadow palettes, it's really hard to get me on, but we are going to talk about one that I purchased and is, like, literally on my eyes right now in this video. And we'll talk about it when we get to it. It's not right now. Okay. Oh, I don't know what this is, but I hate it. Jelly Lip Melt Treatment in Hot Cocoa. Okay, so they're, like, in little... Is it by Tony Moly? I hate jelly. I hate jello. I hate gelatin. Okay? Now... Gelatin being in some things isn't bad, but I don't like things that wiggle. Why does it do that? I don't think food should wiggle like that. Like, it just... Why? Like, why? Did, who did that? Also, like, how did we end up with gelatin? Because isn't gelatin, like, horse byproduct? I'm just saying, and listen, I'm not one to be up here saying, I eat meat, right? I'm not, try, I'm not trying to be holy that. But it's like, who figured that out? And then why are we eating that? I don't know. Anyway, I'm joking, by the way. If you like gelatin, I, I, I'm just, <laughs> just like a thought process here. I'm repulsed by this. I don't want any of my cosmetics to be jelly. No, 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 not like jello. Uh, no, and it's in a mold. Ugh, I hate it. I hate it. Tony Moly's whole thing is like cutesy wootsy, but like I can't, not that. It's grossing me out. I hate it. This is from Patrick Ta. He released, these are already available. People already have them. I see reviews popping up left and right of this. There is the new face and eye palette, which I want to talk about. There's also a plumping gauze, but let's talk about this palette. So this palette has two, well, four blushes and then it's like in his traditional format with the creams and the powders and then there are four topper eyeshadow shades on the left hand side. I have to get all my biases about face palettes and eye palettes and face eye palettes out of the way right now. For me in the way that I utilize makeup this ain't make any goddamn sense for me to have. I like my blushes. I don't like face palettes. I've lamented this so many times on my channel before where it's just like, is it going to work for all people of all skin tones? Did you only make one? Whatever, whatever. I don't really think that's a problem for this one because I feel like, and I could be speaking out of line here, I feel like these pink blushes would work on like a lot of skin tones. Maybe not all, but a lot, especially the creams. Patrick Ta has only gotten me on lipstick so far. Other than that, Patrick Ta has like, I just, I don't care <laughs> what Patrick Ta's doing because it feels expensive, but and for what? You know, like expensive and for what? Like, what am I getting out of that expense? Because again, I just feel like everything I've heard about what he has put out is like mid at best. I think the things that have done the best review wise from what I've seen have been the blushes. So, okay. The first year that Patrick Todd did one of these blush palettes, now it didn't have eyeshadows in it, went over really well. People were really excited about it. And I'm fairly certain that a couple of the shades that were limited edition in that palette eventually got brought out as like permanent in the line. Last year's face palette did really bad. People did not like it. It was not good. People were like zero out of 10, not a fan, do not buy. And I feel like this is like comeback queen. He's like, look what I can do. You know what I mean? Like, and then he released this. I am repulsed by this. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. It's not even my bias against pink because you, as you may know, I don't, I don't wear pink. Merch down below. You can get your own. I don't wear pink sweatshirt that is pink. And we all know that I actually really am okay with pink, but like, you know, I don't like pink, you know? Anyway, so it's not even that. It's just like, why? Because Patrick Ta, if you had released a quad of these sparkly eyeshadows, I would have bought it in less than a second. I would have been like, oh, I want to know what that's about. But now I don't because I don't want four blushes to come with it because I don't like having my blushes picked for me in a palette. I'm never going to use all of them. I don't think I would like his system with the powder and the creams. Blah, 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 blah. I am not one who layers blush. Now, so there are people, there's people who are so into that. I'm not one of those people. So that doesn't work for me. So you've, you've lost me. I'm paying $65 for four eyeshadows, which I would pay $65 for four eyeshadows, by the way. I'm not saying that's what he should price that as, is if he, if he ever releases a quad. I really wish these were released as singles because I'm interested in them because I'm like, oh, what's that about? Like, I want to know more about that. I love a sparkly topper. I love sparkles, you know? Like, that's a, a gig I can get into. I'm not going to do this. I wouldn't buy this. But also just like, I don't understand the practicality of this. Of course, one could put a shimmer shadow all over their eye, a shimmer topper, and be like, that's a whole look. One could, but I do feel as though these are the kind of eyeshadows that you're going to want to build a little bit before you put them on. And then I can't do that with this palette. Now, if you buy Patrick Ta's matte neutral palette, I could see 
doing them in tandem. But like, I don't want that. I want a fully realized thought. This feels like two half thoughts that were smashed together and being sold to me as a whole thought. And I don't like that. Like, I don't see the vision of this. And I'm sure if I heard Patrick Todd talk about what, why he did this format for this, I maybe I would understand it a little bit more. But my brain and the way that I use makeup looks at that and says, that's the most impractical thing that I could ever buy. I don't like it. I think the packaging is pretty. I am excited by those toppers inside, but I'm not buying this. I would never buy this. Like, I just don't think I would buy this. If it came my way for review, like if Patrick Todd or, I don't know, a friend of mine bought it, used it, and wants to hear my thoughts on it, and like, they're done with it, they send it my way to hear what I think about it. I guarantee I would use it for a little bit of time, and then I would be like, I don't want to use this ever again. Not because it's bad quality. I'm not trying to say that it's bad quality. I don't know. I'm not buying it. I won't know. I just, I simply will not know. I will use it, get to know it, and be like, this is still impractical to me. I'm going to give this away. Like, that's exactly what would happen. Whether it was sent to me in PR or otherwise. I just, it's like, this is not something that I see high use value in. And at this point, what I'm deciding to purchase has to have high use value in it. And I have to think that before I buy it. And like, this does not check off that box at all. Oh, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. So Charlotte Tilbury released her holiday collection and it includes the Beautyverse palette. I think let's just talk about the palette. I am wearing it on my eyes right now. And let's talk about why? Well, I think ultimately I should really own up to it. I had a bad day one day and something that I often fall into when I'm having a bad day is I buy something for myself. And that could range from a little bit of ice cream all the way to a Charlotte Tilbury $75 palette. Okay, so that's what happened. But it wasn't an entirely impulse buy because it was actually a purchase that I was thinking about making any which way. You may or may not know about me that I'm not like super into eyeshadow palettes all of the time. Again, we talked about a couple of eyeshadow bits before and I was like not interested, not interested because it's like almost immediately I see an eyeshadow palette. I'm like, I don't care. But this one I felt a little bit differently about. As I tell you about this, because this is critical sass, you need to think about what I'm saying and whether or not that resonates with you. Because the reasons I decided to buy this and the reasons that I decided that I like this enough to buy it might not resonate with you. So these could be reasons why you should not buy it. And this is only my first time wearing it, so I can't speak to longevity, but I really like the eye look I did today. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna get ya. I have a eyeliner also on on the outside. I'll talk about it later, I'm gonna do a review on that palette. And I'll make it fast. I mean, I won't wait three months to review it whenever it's not available anymore. But it might also, in the time that I get to know it, it might not be available because Charlotte Tilbury's pretty popular. Here's why I was thinking about it. So when I first saw it, I was like, hmm. I kind of like that soft pink and the soft colors. And I was like, you know what it really looks like to me? It looks like ethereal eyes from Makeup by Mario, but with like color. And it's like, oh, that would be like a fun way to spice things up. I've tried Charlotte Tilbury's eyeshadow palettes before. I tried one of her quads and I also have her pop shots, which I really like. Now the pop shots aren't perfect. They don't have great longevity, but I really like them. I still like them enough that I kept it. Like I have Smoky Quartz. It's like my little baby. I love it. It's my favorite little eyeshadow. It's like one of, it's one of my favorite eyeshadows. I just really, really like it. And so I already know that I like her mattes and these are new formulas, which, but I was like, I kind of trust Charlotte Tilbury having tried her eyeshadows. I don't trust Charlotte Tilbury with all of my makeup, but I do trust her with eyeshadows. I think she really knows the powder, right? And knows how to perform them. These are new matte formulas, which like didn't really excite me. It was really the sparkles inside of this palette that really made me go, I want it. And I was like, this feels like the, the more fun ethereal eyes, like the little less boring. Not only that, the outer packaging is absolutely stunning. And my thought initially was that maybe these are the pop shot formula in a palette with other things. I thought that is something that I could be very interested in. Now, I am wearing it. A little bit of a spoiler, a little bit of thoughts about it. I've had this on for a few hours. The pop shots normally would crease on me. These haven't. I did use glitter glue, but I've also used glitter glue with the pop shots. The pop shots crease on me, which is okay by me. I like that creasy look sometimes, but these aren't doing that. They're holding their own, okay? And these are very different. And I also, the mats were also very different. Anyway, to be determined whether or not this was a good purchase for me. But that's why I decided to buy it. It's like, it reminds me of Ethereal Eyes, but it's not the same as Ethereal Eyes. If this was completely neutral, I would have been tempted by it, but I wouldn't have bought it. What I really was buying it for was like the five sparkle shades. And I was like, I'll be able to use those mats with that because I trust Charlotte's mats. You know what I mean? Like I trust that she's going to formulate a good mat. So it was more about how I feel about the sparkly shades whenever I bought it. And I also ultimately, like, don't think I made the wrong decision in buying it. I bought it for the wrong reason because I was sad. Something had upset me. Now, I was, to be fair to me, 
very upset. <laughs> like it was a bad day. It was like a really bad day. Like I was like pretty much more upset than I had been in like quite some time. Like I was pretty upset. And I also, you know, more justification, more reasoning behind it is like I also haven't bought makeup since August. And I think early August. I did not buy any makeup in September. And it was like really nice to see a makeup release where I was like excited about it. Like I got like I saw this palette release and it was something I couldn't stop thinking about, which is why whenever I was like, I'm feeling sad. <laughs> like because like it was the first thing I thought to buy. Charlotte Tilbury is not my favorite brand. You should all know this by now. But like if you don't I, like I did a full brand review, you can check it out. I'm still very skeptical about the brand. It's not my favorite brand, but like everything about this palette just like seemed like it was right up my alley. And that's why I bought it. It's really really pretty. But let me try to talk you out of it in case you were on the fence about it and you're not sure if you should buy it. I think if you have deep complexion, that deep color is not going to be deep enough. I needed to put the eyeliner on the outside because I felt like it didn't wasn't deep enough. So I don't think it's perfect in that way. It is really pretty. The likelihood that you have these neutrals and you have neutral mattes that you really like, very high, very high. A lot of, whether, even if you don't have a large collection, the likelihood that you have matte eyeshadows in these colors available to you, if you even have one or two eyeshadows, is very high. You don't need that. These sparkle shades in here, very, very pretty. But likely, if you like these kind of shadows, you got something like it. You got something like it. I have something like it. I'm not, I'm not even say, trying to say that, but like, it's really like that. And if you tried the ethereal eyes and you didn't like the, like, didn't like the vibes of that, or if you tried anything with this wet look eyeshadow, I don't think you'll like it. If you're really into high impact, Charlotte's not going to give that to you. That's not what Charlotte's doing. I don't think that's what Charlotte's trying to do. Charlotte's really into you, like very glowy, flawless, easy looking stuff. And I think that this falls in line with that. So if you are someone who sees that sparkle and you're like a lover of indie eyeshadow, and you're a lover of like incredibly intense sparkle, this isn't going to be for you. It's also $75. Now, I did not pay $75 for it because I have a pro discount through Charlotte Tilbury. So I paid 30% off, whatever 30% off is. If you don't know, I'm a licensed esthetician. When you're a licensed esthetician, sometimes that's a benefit. <laughs> you just have to submit, you know, that you're licensed. I'm not a practicing esthetician, but I am a licensed esthetician. All that to be said, I don't think this is something that you need, but I think that if you feel the way I do about eyeshadow and like all the things I said about it, it could be a good purchase for you. Like I think Charlotte did something really nice here. Now I know the reviews are coming out. I haven't watched them. I've kind of caught the idea that maybe people aren't liking it and that's all fair. I really like it so far. Uh, maybe I won't, <laughs> but you know, I don't think it's the worst thing. And Listen, if you need talked out of it, I'm pretty sure Teresa is dead didn't like it. Go check out her review. Also, Lauren May Beauty. I did watch hers, but I had already bought it. <laughs> I watched her like uh, first impressions of it. She also seemed iffy on it. Now she's done a follow-up. I haven't watched the follow-up because she talks about the Patrick Ta thing. And I haven't watched that yet. When I buy an eyeshadow palette, and it's new. I try not to watch other content creators' reviews on it until after I've decided how I feel about it, even if I haven't recorded my thoughts on it yet. Like, I want to know how I feel about it. And I'm still, obviously, I just tried it for the first time today. So I don't know my detailed thoughts about it yet. So I just haven't watched other content. But I would suggest if you are like very tempted by this and it's you don't have the money for it or whatever, whatever. There are other people out there who don't seem to like it. Go watch their content. Let them talk you out of it and receive it. You know, receive it. I lost the Great War when it came to the Charlotte Tilbury palette. I have it on my eyes literally right now. So like on my face, I guess. Elf and Jennifer Coolidge collab together. I don't really have many thoughts about this. I doubt this is still available, but okay. You know, sure. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, what? I don't understand what the, the elf lip collabs keep happening. They did one with Michaela and now they've done with Jennifer Coolidge. Maybe Hope Mess Tom's next. Call me. Elf, call me. I wouldn't do that. Don't call me. Don't call me up. Oh, pardon me. I'm just taking a little bit of a coffee break out of my Justin Bieber lenticular cup. Oh, he's not really dancing. You can't really see him dancing. See how he shifts. Anyway, since I'm taking a little bit of break, I think let's take a little break in the video. Hi, I'm gonna do some plugging. So you can skip if you want to. But if you're new here, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My channel is mostly about loving my makeup collection as it currently is first and foremost, while being very discerning about what I bring in for review and what I bring into my makeup collection and keep permanently. I do get to test a lot of things because I am a small makeup channel. And you know, some brands do send me PR occasionally, I have other friends who send me makeup. And also I have a Patreon and I make money on YouTube that affords me the ability to sometimes buy makeup that I otherwise wouldn't have for review. But what I really like to do on my channel, as I said at the beginning, is try to build the habit for myself and help you build the habit of not pulling the trigger so quickly on new makeup and trying really hard to reflect on the makeup purchases we've already made and the makeup that we can love instead of buying the new thing. And that's not to say that I never buy new things because I'm very interested in makeup. I love trying new things. It's something I really like to do. I'm not saying that you should never buy makeup again. I just think that 
it's important to realize that like a lot of the makeup that we already have really satiates what we think because we tend to buy a lot of the same stuff, right? Like if you like silver eyeshadow, you might have a lot of silver eyeshadow. And when a new silver eyeshadow comes out, it's like, hmm, what if I just like use the silver eyeshadow that I already have that I really like and I know that I like instead of risking it to buy the new thing. I understand I get caught up, I get swept up. The Charlotte Tilbury palette, you know, like sometimes I just want to buy something new. But if you happen to be a person who has the means to buy every new makeup release and that's what makes you the most happy, please keep doing it. But just know that on my channel, that's what I try to do. I try to be really just learning about what I do here. So if that sounds good, I would really love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. That's a really great way to support me. Even if you don't subscribe, liking the video really helps me. And I feel like that's like the least you could do. If you made it this far into the video, you're just like, <laughs> give me a big old thumbs up. I also am on Patreon.com. As I said earlier, it's patreon.com slash hopemesstom. Over there, I do additional content like my podcast with my friend Kaki of Kaki Reviews Beauty that comes out weekly. And I also do some additional videos over there. I try to do at least one a month. Sometimes I manage to do more things a month. It depends on how much time I have but I really want to thank all of my current patrons. You really make the world go round. I really appreciate you, but there's no pressure to join my Patreon. You don't have to do it. You can do it or not doing it. Liking, commenting, letting me know your thoughts is really the best way to support me. And sharing, sharing is a really great way to support me. And if you happen to really vibe with me and you haven't checked out my podcast with my friend Tiffany, that's linked down below. It's on Spotify. It's free to listen to. It's called Recollect. Recollect is spelled W-R-E-C-K collect. You got it? Okay, but it's also linked down below. You can just click it and it's on Spotify because it's a music podcast and the music is included in the episodes and the only way we can do that is through Spotify and that's why it's there. That's why not, not anywhere else. So check that out. Okay, I think I'm done with the plugs. I wish I tried to get it into frame. I'm wearing like a a skirt. It's not really a mini skirt. It's, I bought it from Torrid of all places. Can I be a slut? I can unzip that. Hold on. Oh yeah, I got a little leg showing out now because I unzipped it a little bit. That's hot. It has like a chain on it. It's like really giving like Hot Topic circa 2003. And wasn't Torrid like supposed to be fat Hot Topic? It all makes sense. The circles keep spinning and here we are, you and I in this moment together. Okay, one more sippy. <laughs> I do have nails on. I got yelled at once for not wearing nails during Kiddos House. Here they are. They're linked down below. These are from Signet. Beauty. I think I said that right. Anyway, go check them out. They have a bunch. They're like a TikTok brand. That's where I first saw them. I think they're a TikTok brand. Anyway, go check them out. I really like them, but I don't like their glue. <laughs> if that means anything to you. Gucci really said, let's give them nothing this holiday. Let's think of nothing new. <laughs> we don't need anything new. Gucci is doing a holiday collection, but it's their bronzer with a limited edition packaging. It Looks like only two of the shades, according to Trend Mood, which I'm not coming for her gig. You know, she does a lot of work, but like sometimes we don't get the full story on Trend Mood. $37.50 for that Gucci concealer. But it says fair and medium. And there's only two in the picture. I went to Sephora.com just to see what was going on on with these bronzers and if they're only available in that limited edition packaging in fair and medium. And it turns out that that is truthful. So fair comes in this packaging and medium comes in this packaging, but the other shades were just left out. <laughs> I don't know why, but they made a choice. Gucci's bronzer range. I'm not saying it's the most vast, but it is more vast than two. In fact, I say this a lot is that when it comes to luxury, Gucci is one of the brands who really seems to make an attempt to be as inclusive as possible, but it would really suck if their holiday pattern was only on two of the shades. It's kind of cute, but like, I just got one of these for free and I don't need it in a different package. There's also three lipsticks. I do not know if these are lipsticks that are already in their range. My guess is probably. Here's what I'll say. If you already have the Gucci bronzer, like if you already have it and you know you love it, you don't need it in that compact. If, if Gucci made refillable packaging, maybe, maybe then I would say, Go for it. Because then you could just keep the limited edition packaging, refilling it, refilling it, refilling it. We have a little bit of a conversation though. When was the last time you used up a whole bronzer? Now I know that my usage is much different than yours and I have a lot of makeup. Even though I'm discerning, I know I still have like a large makeup collection. I don't think I have like a minimum like <laughs> Even those of you who have one bronzer or one or two bronzers that you use every day, how long does it take you to use up a whole bronzer? And so the likelihood of you finishing a bronzer it's like very slim, right? Even if it was refillable. Like I'm not even talking, I mean, still talking about a theoretical here. If you already have this bronzer and it's not almost done and you really like it, then just keep using the one you got. The only 
thing that I could see this enticing is as someone that was on the edge of maybe wanting to buy the Gucci bronzer, if this pattern speaks to you, if this is like enough to make you go get it, then I guess go get it. I like the Gucci bronzer. It's something now that I have tried it, it's something that if I would have paid for it, which it was sent to me by a friend, if I would have paid for it, I, I wouldn't have been disappointed. I actually really quite like it. And that's coming from me. I have not liked every Gucci product that I've tried. In fact, I've disliked more than I have liked. All I'm saying is like, maybe if you really like this pattern and you don't already have it, this could be worth it. But other than that, if you already have this bronzer or you were never interested in this bronzer, then now's not the time just because it has little hexagons on it. You know what I mean? Like that's not enough of a reason for you to go out and buy this. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci girl. <laughs> what are you doing? No Beauté palettes? No eyeshadow palettes this year? Weird. Where's the palette de beauté? De you, you know, or whatever that you would call it. That's the first one. Just different packaging feels like a little bit lazy for a holiday release, if you ask me. Because if you did like a whole collection with new makeup in this cute packaging, you maybe would have got me. Let's talk about some PTSD. Okay, the Nightmare Before Christmas and Mel Cosmetics have collabed. It's like technically Disney and they released the Halloween Town collection. Not that Halloween Town, this Halloween Town. If you know, you know. Imagine if there was a Halloween Town collection. Not this Halloween Town, this Halloween Town. I think it would have been really funny. Inspired by Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas, there's eight pieces showcasing our favorite moments from our characters from Halloween. Town. There's the eyeshadow palette for $60, two ultra matte lipsticks, $24 each, two gel liners, $24 each, uh, and the True Love Never Dies Digital Dust Highlight for $42, the Halloween Town Mirror for $25, and the Halloween Town Bag for $35. Also opt to buy the whole collection for $175. Don't know if any of this is still available, by the way. Their Halloween collections tend to do very well. There's the Halloween Town palette with Mr. Oogie Boogie. Mr. Oogie Boogie says there's true trouble close at hand. Well, 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 what have we here? Santa Claus, mm -mm, I'm really scared. So this palette is a literal, it's, it's a nightmare. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> and it's before Christmas. Ah, they got me. We've talked about how I'm in real life. Not the cleanest person, right? Messy room over there, clean room where you can see it. You, the internet, I keep this clean for you. Not for me, for you. And for my mentality and so that you don't judge me. Whenever there's negative space in an eyeshadow palette, it feels like you're not optimizing your space. And I'm not all about optimization, right? Sometimes it takes me all day to do a dish, like clean one dish, you know what I mean? Like, I get it. Like, I don't need everything in my life to be optimized. But when I see this, I'm like, oh, oh no, it's all crooked. And I think one side of the palette is smaller than the other side of the palette. And I hate that. I know some people collect makeup to look at. And I don't quite understand you, but you're welcome to do whatever you want. Like I said, you can navigate this beauty space however you'd like. And if you're a collector and that really resonates with you. But as someone who is trying to curate my collection more, whenever I see something that would not store well with my other things, and I definitely have some makeup that does not store well, is it Maya palettes? I'm looking at you. I definitely have some stuff where I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. And I don't know how to organize my life in order to like sufficiently. The fact that this once it fit in, <laughs> Like, I just the way I imagine it sitting in my drawer, I just see it and it makes me so angry. The color story... Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not really getting, uh, like, Nightmare Before Christmas. There's a lot of saturation here. And that feels wrong. I see, like, some of the colors inspired by Mr. Oogie Boogie, but, like, also, like... But also, who else? <laughs> Again, I, I I feel that it's pretty hard to make a Halloween palette because I think it all should look like that ghost face palette. And I see a Halloween palette that doesn't look like that ghost face palette. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if that's dark enough. And again... You know, like, I don't know that there's a perfect way. I, I'll know it when I see it. Like, the Beetlejuice palettes that they did a couple years ago. Now, that was something to look at. That was a spectacle. And I think that the cover is lenticular. So, like, when you move it, like, Mr. Oogie Boogie changes. It's not even really giving me... Like, if you remove all of the nonsense around it and how <laughs> this palette is made, and you put all of those shadows on a white background, and you show it to someone and be like, this is Nightmare Before Christmas inspired, I don't think that they would think that that's right. <laughs> like, I don't think that they would look at that and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't, because I don't think it does. So I think the palette's 
whatever. And then the highlighter, it's like in this neon orange loose compact. The highlighter itself looks pretty. It looks like every other champagne gold to pink shift highlighter that I've ever seen. So I don't know if you need it in the digital dust. Again, this feels like a makeup collector thing. Someone who doesn't want to use their makeup because you don't want to ruin that embossing because the embossing's cute. This vibrant orange. There wasn't colors like this in Nightmare Before Christmas. So I'm just a little bit confused. And I understand that orange pumpkin but like it's been a while since I've seen that before Christmas but I don't remember like pumpkins being a main feature and if they were they were not neon because there was nothing really neon in that movie because of the way that it was shot I'm not really understanding it and then there's two eyeliners now I've heard only good things about these gel eyeliners from Mel. I heard they're very excellent. While I like gel eyeliner and I would like to explore it more these are the shades but I would say if I were to buy anything from this collection it would be these two things the most, right? Like, I, it's like, okay, those are pretty. I really like that orange one. I like how deep it is. It's like, it's not like your typical bright orange. And then they have ultra matte lipsticks. I don't really like matte lipsticks. So like the word ultra matte just kind of scares me off anyway. I feel like I've also haven't heard good things about their formulas, but they are also in orange lucite, which is like, okay, whatever. And the only thing that is catching my eye is the color of that orange lipstick is a very pretty orange but guess what I already have it because I have Givenchy Brique and it's like looks like the same <laughs> so if you I, although the last time I tried to link Givenchy Brique I was still able to find it on Givenchy's website Givenchy je, je parle français tu parles français I'm very global if brick isn't available on Givenchy's website anymore and you were after it this might be a good alternative I can't speak to the formula I really like Givenchy's sheer velvet matte formula I doubt I would like this one but I can't say that for sure because I've never tried it I don't think that this collection's a flop I just feel like when I think of melt and their creativity I just think that this doesn't meet what I think of melt and what they are capable of whenever they do a collab in fact I feel like melts missed the mark the last couple of releases that they've had I expect more from them I just, it doesn't feel like well thought out to me, personally. <laughs> the Oogie Boogie song is a bop though. Just throw that on sometimes. Like, even if it's not Halloween, just give that a spin. Okay, Dior. It's the Blooming Boudoir Collection. I don't know if this is their holiday collection or if this is supposed to be for spring, but it's out now. So there is the 10 color other, <laughs> the ten, je suis français, je, I, I am French. <laughs> no. Dior show 10 color <laughs> show palette for $140. Oh my God. Dior addict case for $30. I don't know what they're talking about. Dior forever cushion powder. Okay. I'm going to read this to you. It says, this loose setting powder sets makeup, providing a fine, fresh texture on the skin. It enhances the complexion by mattifying and evening out the skin tone while effectively correcting color and imperfections in shade 050 Lavender, $72. I'm fairly certain I have this. I think this is what this is. Okay, hold on. What's the shade here? It's dusty because it's just been sitting there. So I think this is from another year. I didn't buy this, by the way. And it's in the shade Me Fury. So this might not be the same, but I would say... I would say if I was you, I wouldn't buy that because that one has shimmer particles in it. And not just like, you know, to make your skin glowy, like glitter chunks in it. Like it's so glittery. I don't remember which video I used it in, but I did try it in one video and I used it as a setting powder and my face was so sparkly. I love Edward Cullen in the sun, but gay, you know, just like, just like glitter. <laughs> shooting out of my face and then also as I was applying it there was just glitter just floating around my face almost as if like it was a special effect but it was just the glitter it was so much glitter let's talk about this palette though because I'm like what we're in fall listen I don't think there are any rules about what colors you can wear when I don't think that I really would release this palette unless it was spring which leads me to like that's why I think it might be a spring 2024 like that's what it's for but there were just there you can buy it now $140 listen your eyeshadows did not impress me. That don't impress me much. Oh, oh, oh. Obviously, I think that there is definitely differences in color here. Like, there's differences in depth. I don't know, man. There's like a yellow in here. There's a red. There's a orange. There's a deep purple. Like, I just, I look at that and I'm like, I don't see a look I would want to do. Like, I just don't see a, I don't look, there's not a look in there that I want to make. 
not on my eyes and I'm certainly not for $140. Based on my experience with Dior eyeshadows, I don't think I tried them since they've done all of this reformulating to remove talc so that they can sell in the EU um, or continue selling in the EU or in America. I don't know. A bunch of brands are reformulating to meet some kind of standard. I think Makeup Forever is doing it and I think Dior like, is doing it too, which is like why they their backstage stuff is all getting reformulated. Anyway, food for thought. I haven't tried their new eyeshadow formula, but if I were going to buy a Dior eyeshadow, I'd buy a single and I would just find the one that's the prettiest and the one that speaks to me most rather than paying $140. I would rather pay $40 for one eyeshadow than pay $140 for this many. And I understand quantity, quality, blah, 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 blah. Like, I understand that. But like, let's say there was one eyeshadow in this palette that I was interested in. And I was like, oh man, I can't live without that eyeshadow. There's no, even then, even then, that's like the most unique eyeshadow I ever found. Paying $140 for one eyeshadow does not make a lot of sense. And I know you understand that. But I think sometimes we get swept up in these fantasies when we see a color in an eyeshadow palette. I recently talked about in my last video how there's that one shade in the Pat McGrath one, like the Mothership One palette, that silver, lavender. And it's like, but like I could see myself now looking at that eyeshadow palette and buying it just because I wanted that one shadow, kind of disregarding all of the other eyeshadows in the palette. And then I spent $125, $129 for one eyeshadow, but I have now nine other eyeshadows that I'm not that interested in and I don't really want to use. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If this palette speaks to you, which, tell me why. <laughs> and I'm like genuine, because I, I, I'm like even trying to, in my brain, I'm even trying to think of people who shop at the Dior counter, like, you know, the, the people who are like wealthy, have always shopped at counters for the makeup. I'm like, I see them come up <laughs> and I would see them look at this and go, it's both too much color and like not enough color to be anything. It's simply a piece of white Italian bread just presented to you from Dior. That's like the vibe I'm getting. It's like, did you want Texas toast? Oh, no, it's plain. Not even buttered. White Italian bread. My friend Nicole bought this. I can't wait to hear. I feel like she's going to tear it to shreds. KBD Beauty released, I think, their holiday collection. And there's a couple of things, but let's focus on this eyeshadow palette. So it's their Surreal Bloom Metallic Vegan Eyeshadow Palette, and it's $28. That's like, not bad. Now I'm imagining that this is much smaller than I think it is. However, I think this is good. Would I buy it? No, I wouldn't even consider buying it. But I looked at it and I thought, I don't hate that. And it appears to be in a tin, which I like. I think we sometimes forego tin as one of our sustainable options, but like I'm fairly certain that tin's recyclable. I think that's pretty luxe, you know, and for $26, you know, it's like a little tin. It's kind of giving me like the idea of like a moon dust shadow. It, it's like six metallics and it's not an overwhelming amount. There's going to be a review coming out for me in, in the, a week or two about an eyeshadow palette that's all shimmer shimmers in it. I think six shimmers as a companion palette is fine. I think 14 shimmers as a companion palette, too many shimmers. I just think the way that we do our makeup now, or the way that I feel like the internet does its makeup, I'm thinking of kind of TikTok here. Now, I know that TikTok, it's like kind of what is TikTok doing? Everything moves so fast and who knows what the trend is. And I know that I think we've, I feel like we've thought that they've been trending more like high coverage 2016 makeup recently, but I could see someone, if you, especially if you're like into the moon dust eyeshadows, which they're also releasing their own eyeshadow palette, but it, that's what I'm feeling. Like it's like a, one of those moon dust palettes. Here are some very very special shades, a little curated six pan shades of, and it's like, I could really easy carry that with me with one of my eyeshadow palettes that has my favorite mattes in it. And I could like throw that in and mix and match. I think it's a pretty good release. And I also think $28, I, again, I don't know how big it is. I'm now I'm imagining it. It's like this big credit card size, but even then $26 or $28 or whatever I said, I just want to price check it before we do it, before I start praising it because $37 and 50 cents, you know, I can't find it on Sephora or whatever, but I know that <laughs> my friend bought it. So I have no idea how much it actually is. $28 for something like this feels like very fair. So like, what is that? So six, 28 divided by six, 24 divided by six is four. It's like, so a little bit over $4 in eyeshadow. And even if the pans are a little bit small, you get like six of them, you get try the formula. I just think that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm like, I, 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 is this something that I'm super interested in? No. But I think what KVD tries to do most of the time, trying to like get on their feet. Not that I don't think that they're on their feet, but like, you know, the brand has felt more confused since the Kat Von D of it all. I really think that they are like finding themselves in this space. Like they almost did it, but I think they need to reconsider the actual branding of their brand. It seems like they want to be this like ethereal brand as, as opposed to this like dark, dark, dark brand, which is like what they were. That's what like the 
trying to come out of that. And like they've had some success with some of their complexion products, but I feel like they haven't nailed like an eyeshadow release except for the glimmer sticks, which I think people really liked. But it's like, it does feel like their makeup is more ethereal rather than this like tattoo based thing. And I think if they like let go of that and really leaned into that, I think people would like it. Like imagine going to the KVD section of your Sephora or of your Ulta and it just being like white. And then all of that stuff that they've been releasing just really gets to shine. It's something that they should consider because I feel like their branding is really confused because KVD used to, you used to think that it like ran Kat Von D and you were like goth, dark, whatever. And now that's like not what they're doing at all. It's like they've pivoted, but it's like they're still trying to hold on to the KVD of it all. But I think they would be more successful if they just like rebranded like 100%. No more K, no more V, no more D, just like a, a new brand that felt more ethereal. And I think people would just see it differently. And then we would stop calling it KVD. And no, I wouldn't be like back when it was Kat Von D. Like, you know, like you would just drop all of that. Anyway, I think this is a pretty good release. I think it's a pretty good release, but call me KVD. I have some ideas. There's two more things I want to talk about. We'll talk about the Sephora sale a little bit. So it looks like for Rouge, it's going to be 27th through the 6th, and VIB will be 31st through the 6th, and Insider will be 31st through the 6th. Rouge gets 20% off, VIB gets 15 and then the Insiders get 10% off. If you are VIB or an Insider, don't shop this sale. I mean that. If there are some things that you would like, like you've been thinking about it, you've had your eye on some things. I know this is really hard, especially for people who have like a compulsion to shop. I do too. Being on brand list serves where they email you all the time that things are going on, things are going on. It's a lot and it can be very easy to fall into the habit of buying. Most brands, especially around the time that Sephora does this sale, also run sales and often better, especially for people who would be VIP or just a regular insider, because most brands will run 20, but most brands will do 25 to 30 to even 40% off on their own websites right around this time. Now, it's hard to know when or where they'll do that, like, but oftentimes leading up into it and like immediately following the Sephora sale, brands that are sold in Sephora and not will run sales around this time because they all know that Sephora is running their sale and it's like they would also like to move product not through Sephora because when you buy from a brand's website, they make more money because it's not something that Sephora takes half the cut of. You know what I mean? Like, so they're going to get like their regular amount plus the half that the retailer that they would have sold it at has. It behooves them to like do their own sales. So you buy through their website. You can normally, even at a sign up on one of the makeup websites, get better than 10% off on your first purchase. So if you've never purchased from that brand, the brands want you really to buy through their website and they will do whatever they can. And often brands run regular sales throughout the year on their websites, even removing Black Friday, which is all, you know, it's like Black Friday is coming, every brand's going to have a sale. But even throughout the year, like Pat McGrath and Tori Lee runs probably arguably too many sales throughout the year. You know, like there's a lot of brands that do that. Now there are some stingy brands who run no sales throughout the year. Like I just bought something from Sisley. Keep your eyes peeled. But I bought something from Sisley. They only do one sale a year. But I only know that because last year I considered buying the same product that I just bought the one that I just bought last year and I didn't and I kept waiting for them to have a sale and it's like they didn't have a sale until right now. So unless you're Rouge, which again, there should be no, you shouldn't want to be Rouge. You shouldn't want desire to be Rouge. That's like a weird thing to desire. That means nothing. It just means you spend a lot of money at Sephora. Now I am Rouge and like I just organically end up Rouge, but like there are reasons for that. Anyway, I'm not judging anyone who's Rouge. It, 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 sometimes it just happens, right? Like especially if you buy your skincare there or whatever, like, even if you're not like buying every new makeup release, it's just really easy to hit Rouge at Sephora because everything's kind of expensive there. It's just not worth it for 10 to 15% off. Rouge, you have like a little bit of an argument for it. So if you are going to shop this sale, buy what you were already planning on buying at a discount. Don't add new things to the cart. That's not what it's for. Something to also consider is if you only want to buy it because it's on sale, you probably don't want it as much as you think you do. There are obviously people who save up their money and wait for a sale to just shop and save money. And I'm not really talking to those people. So if you're listening, don't go into the comments and be like, this is the only time I shop every year. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people who shop all of the time and are trying to not shop all of the time. So it's a different thing, right? My content is not for everyone, right? So I'm not, I'm not trying to shame you if this is the time of year where you save the most, you save all your money for this time of year to specifically buy makeup only this time of year. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the other people. Since I've changed my mind about the way I consume makeup, when the Sephora sale comes around, I typically am re-upping on skincare or I'm 
repurchasing something that I've recently finished if I liked it enough to repurchase it. I stay in my lane when it comes to skincare. Like I like use the same stuff all over, over and over again. So it makes sense for me to like purchase my skincare when this happens. But I don't buy new things around this time. But again, you know, the way that I buy makeup is going to be different than the way you buy makeup. I have a channel, blah, 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 whatever. Even before my channel like started making me money, whenever the Sephora sale would come around, I was just kind of like re-upping on things. Because let's say, for example, I've been coveting something and it's like, oh, I really don't want that hundred dollars, right? But it's like, do I really want that $80? And I'm going to just refer you to because I think Hannah does a really good job breaking this down. I'm going to link to her playlist in my description box. How to survive the Sephora sale if you are someone who needs or would like to try to avoid that habit of just throwing things into your cart or just buying things because it's like I have a discount. I really just think you should buy things that you've been wanting for a while but just haven't pulled the trigger on and you've been waiting for a sale for. Don't buy anything just because it happens to be on sale. Like that's a thing that I used to get caught on all of the time. But I really do recommend if you are looking for a sale to shop and you are very clear about what you want to buy, like you can buy it somewhere that's not Sephora, which is like every brand has their own website. If you are VIB or you are just a regular insider, if you are only getting 10 or 15 percent off. Check the brand website to see what deal they are running around this time. Not only that, you'll probably get your stuff a lot faster if you buy through the brand website during all of these sales because Sephora gets so backed up during this. Like some people get their stuff weeks and weeks later. I don't think we should you know, be that impatient about the makeup we're buying because it's like not a need. But I understand the excitement about it. So I'm just going to throw that out there because it's like, you know, things get backed up. Not only that. Now, I cannot guarantee that this will happen this year. But the past four or three or four years, I think since 2020, what they do is you shop the sale and then Sephora will send you a coupon for 20% off one purchase for everybody, not just Rouge, everybody. And so you, what they've done is duped you into buying all of this product 10 or 15% off. And then they're trying to dupe you into buying more product for 20% off. Like they're doing you some kind of favor, some kind of kindness. So what I would say to you is if you are VIB or you are an insider, shop the sales at the websites, you're going to get a better discount. Rouge, I even recommend you checking out brand websites to see if you can get a better discount than 20%. Then just hold your horses. Sephora is very likely going to send you a 20% off coupon. It won't be for multiple purchases, but let's let's not make multiple purchases at Sephora just because we can with a discount. I'm just saying just wait for that 20% off and then if you are VIB or insider, you will get 20% off something that you've been waiting for. It's just food for thought. Be very careful about the Sephora sale. I'm just saying. Quickly, I'm just gonna quickly say this. The mini trio chrome palette, I think is very pretty. I think it's very concise. I think Natasha did a really good job. The moon dust palettes are, are finally available. I talked about those already, but they're finally available. This is where we're wrapping things up. Danessa Myricks released the Lightwork Volume 5 I Am palette. It's launching today as I'm recording. So it's October 7th. So it's a new and limited edition Lightwork 5 I Am Affirmation palette now. So inside there are Three curated color stories. Each shade in the palette is designed with all skin tones in mind, with 18 ethereal shades that can be used on the face and eyes. Unveil your inner artist and let creativity shine. There's no price here, but these have previously been like $125. I'm going to tell you why I wouldn't buy this, but this is also specific to me. But I'm also going to try to make it a little bit about you. I have an affinity for these kinds of eyeshadows. I love a multi-chrome. I love shifty shades. I love ethereal makeup, right? I really do. This is too much. When I look at this eyeshadow palette, I can't make a look by itself. I just talked about this. KVD, small six pan, that feels like a companion palette. This is too big to be a companion palette for me. The other thing is I, because I have an affinity for this kind of eyeshadow, have a lot of this kind of eyeshadow available to me right now that I've already paid for and I don't need to pay another $130 for. Specifically, when it comes to these kinds of shades, you inevitably have a preference for a specific kind. I really like green multi-chromes. I really like green shifty shades. So a lot of what I have is green shifty shades. So I would buy this and then I would use the green ones and then I would probably forget about the rest of them. I think the perfect buyer for this is if you don't have any kind of eyeshadows like this and you really want to try them and you think you're going to really like them and you are willing to make the investment in as however much this would cost, maybe. But what I 
really recommend, what I really recommend is if you are interested in trying this kind of thing and you have color preferences already, even if you've not tried these kinds of formulas, I just recommend you really narrowing it down to two or three shades from an indie brand and just buying those and giving them a shot because you might not like them as much as you think. I'm not Khaki, right? But Khaki's brain works differently than me and she bought some Cleona shades and she found them really hard to use and confounding because of the shift in them. And that might be what you feel about them. And why spend $130 when you could spend like, $30 to $40 trying a couple of shades and really getting your head around those. And then if you like those, then you could invest in something bigger like this. But I just think that th these are too much. Not only that, while it probably doesn't look exactly the same as the last three light work palettes, it's kind of close, right? And if you already have them, unless you're a collector and you really love the one you have, you might not love this one as much and then you just have it and then you don't love it. I just think that this is too much of this kind of thing all at once. I just think you should explore these kinds of eyeshadows in small doses and really get your head around what you like. Curating your own little bits of color stories when it comes to this kind of thing is just going to benefit you more than having something like this. And I'm saying this as someone who bought the entire Cleona stained glass collection all at once. And guess what? I don't love all of those shades. I don't use all of those shades. And I was really overwhelmed. I'm just now, three years after doing that, really getting it through and trying all of them and figuring out which ones I like because it's overwhelming. And another thing that I tend to do, and I'm speaking for myself here, is like when I find an eyeshadow color in an eyeshadow palette that I really like, I just kind of make excuses just to use that one and I don't really utilize the other ones. And so if I bought this, I would find the one shade I like and I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna use that shade all the time and I would just open it. This isn't a small palette. Like it, it, it's not something that's gonna be like easy to lug around if that's something that you're interested in. I just think small singles in this kind of category is like the way to go. Again, I think what Danessa is doing is really cool, bringing this kind of thing to a mass market. I always respect what Danessa Myricks is doing. I really appreciate the work that she does. I ultimately think that this kind of eyeshadow palette is tired. And if you don't already own one and you've been interested in one, maybe this could be a good buy for you. I'm not saying it's a bad buy for everyone. I'm saying it's a bad buy for me and a lot of people who might be into this kind of thing. But if you've done the math and you figure it out and you know that you will use most, if not all of these eyeshadows, then maybe this will be the best thing for you because these kind of eyeshadows are expensive to make. And when you buy them in singles from indie brands, it would really add up. This is a great way to try a lot of things. And that's why I think if you know that you would like these and you haven't, don't have anything like this in your collection, it could be a good buy. But I just think if you have one, two, or three, light work one, two, or three, I think it's just two and three, because light work one, I think, is a highlighter palette. Anyway, if you have one of the other Danessa Myrick shifty eyeshadow palettes, how different do you think this one's going to be? Like, realistically, how different do you think this one's going to be? And now you could talk to me about texture and whatever in the comments down below. And I obviously know that there are very big nuances when it comes to eyeshadows and stuff like that. I just don't think that you're going to get what out of this what you think you're gonna get out of this because I I that's how I feel that's how like if I bought this I could I could just see it past me being really excited about this buying this and then just like never using it I wouldn't I kind of wouldn't like I'm you know I'm in the process of getting a lot of rid of a lot of my eyeshadow palettes because this eyeshadow palettes are like not where my heart wholly is now it doesn't mean I'll never use an eyeshadow or never buy an eyeshadow palette again again I have that Charlotte Tilbury thing on my eyes right now it's just like you have to be very specific in particular about what you do and what you use before you buy something like this because it could be really high value to a lot of people, but it also could seem really high value to someone where it wouldn't have much value to that person at all. And you just have to be very real with yourself about how you use makeup and what you like to do with makeup. I'm running out of memory. I need to wrap this up. So if you are new and you enjoyed today's video, I would love to have you subscribe. Uh, make sure to like the video, comment, share it with people before you leave. I would really appreciate that. I'm on Patreon if you wanted to take your support to that level. You can go and do that. Again, thank you to all of my current patrons. You are Patreons, my current patrons, <laughs> you're absolutely lovely. I need to stop talking. This is my second video I've recorded today. You are really lovely. I really appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. Even if you're not a patron, remember to follow your host and you will find me. Bye-bye.